to waste while well if it's not welcome back please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button full of energy <laughs> joking um so today's going to be a cleaning video just going to hop right into it with my beautiful baboon um i don't know why my girlfriend's looking at me like i've killed like 20 puppies but come look at my newly refurbished hook wall and tongs because you know i handle in every way not just with my hands but let's do open i don't know what my girlfriend's showing you but hopefully something nice but yeah i want to deep clean my baboon vipers enclosure as It's just been very, um, you know, special, like the, the type of special that your, your parents don't tell you about. Um, yeah, you go to those special schools and things like that. But come check out this beautiful gaboon over here. Absolutely gorgeous. What I was trying to say before my girlfriend oh so rudely interrupted me with <laughs> whatever she was doing. I just want to deep clean his enclosure because I haven't deep cleaned it since um, I moved him into this enclosure. So... Just want to get him out real quick. He is the calmer of the two gaboons that I used to have, but check at the size of him. Look at how big he has gotten. Check the size of that head. He's just reversing straight off the hook. So let's just get him straight on here. Look at the size of the head. These guys are famously known for having the world's largest fangs. They also have a pretty potent venom. Also supposedly the biggest venom yield even though there is a lot of debate around that subject i'm just moving his tail around here but yeah he has cardiotoxic venom well component in his venom and yeah those are specifically designed to shut down and destroy your heart so it's not a bite you would want to take and the amount of venom that these guys can pump into you it's just it would be a long day for you this, this is the West African Gaboon, not Betis Gabunica. Betis Gabunica is actually endangered, so it is very difficult to get, even though they are locally found in South Africa, up at KZN. But check how gorgeous these guys are. Called Betis Rhinosaurus because of that little horn on the top of their nose. They're renowned for being quite gentle and quite reluctant to bite, but again, you wouldn't want to risk a bite from one of these guys, but I'm just gonna get them straight into the bin clean up this enclosure I just checked on my house snakes after putting those gaboons back and look at all three of them cuddling there. The big one at the bottom is a female, the one at the top top, not the brown one, the albino one, is a male and the small one to your guys left is also a female. Beautiful snakes, non-venomous constrictors found native in South Africa. Gorgeous animals. This enclosure sanitized everything down, throwing some greenery in there if you want to come have a look to make it look professional um you can see that a man's designed it because i've just fucking thrown everything in but let's get this beautiful gaboon out you can actually come check how big it is in here it's got absolutely huge this is about i think going on 1.5 years now so yeah i'm very happy with their growth rate um he has been quite the hissy hissy fissy snake but he, he was actually the calm one, which is actually quite, if you can imagine it. The female that I had was actually very, very mean. They'd like to tag anything that moved. He doesn't even want to tag his, he didn't even want to tag his food. Absolutely gorgeous snake though. I'm just going to get him straight back. What I think I'm going to do though is dunk his head in the water. Like... Bjorn from Reptile Garden showed me just to get him to start drinking because these guys there you guys can see that he will start drinking there you could see his jaws flexing like that but yeah these guys in the wild would wait for the rain to come and the rain droplets to sort of drink off their surroundings and things like that so it's a very important step that you need to take with these baby gaboons in captivity obviously this isn't a baby but yeah, it's a very important step to take with these gaboons to make sure that they are properly hydrated. If they don't want to take, you just hold their head a little bit and they should start to take. But I think he might have got everything that he needed. He's absolutely beautiful. He's going to need an upgrade of his enclosure quite soon. You can check the absolute size of them. 
absolutely gorgeous animals. But yeah, he is hopefully happy and enjoys his enclosure. But I'm going to move on to, we can just actually move straight on to the, the Cape Cobra. Um, this absolutely lovely individual loves me with all his heart and he definitely loves to be handled. Um, one of the calmest snakes I own. Definitely, but he's taken a doo-doo in the back right of his enclosure and his water needs to be cleaned. Um, so I'm just going to do that real quick. And yeah, hopefully things go well because, you know, he's one of the most well-behaved snakes I own. And he definitely doesn't want to try and kill me every single time I take him out. But the camera woman has to be a bit careful. Ooh, he's deep, deep in shed. So I will take him out because I've already disturbed him. But you can see there, he's a zombie snake. So snakes periodically go through shedding cycles, which is just their growth. Um, just like how we get new clothes when we go through puberty. But you can see what I mean by a lovely snake. <laughs> but what I was saying is that um, when we go through puberty, obviously we grow and we get new clothes. These guys change their entire scales when they grow um these youngsters obviously grow a lot faster and have a fa lot faster metabolism than the older ones so they shed roughly about every two months i'd say but it depends on the food that they're getting and obviously how much food um but yeah i'm gonna get him out he might be way more pissy you can see i'm not even moving and he's charging at me and these are bluff strikes as you can see that he is open mouth and he's ready to go so yeah camera room's gonna have to vacate a little bit and yeah so while they're in shed i need to say he can't see very well um and cobras and most elapids rely on their eyesight to hunt and to defend themselves so he is going to be very very grumpy with me and i just have to be very gentle because i also don't want to mess up his shedding process but you can see there, the tactile response. So the tactile, the cobras respond to sort of, well, I think they respond to mainly tactile and sort of movement. So movement based, their eyesight and tactile response. Obviously right now, he can't see very well. So he has to rely solely on what he feels to react to things. So the touch obviously makes him a lot more aggro than he usually does, but I don't want to mess with him too much. Just gonna get him straight into the bin. And there we go. Beautiful snake, but yeah, he's quite an asshole. <laughs> but I'm just gonna clean up his enclosure and I'll put him back and get back to you guys now. Just spot cleaned his enclosure because I deep cleaned his enclosure like literally two or three days ago. But you can check how dark he is and you can compare it to when I usually take him out and how light he usually is. He still looks beautiful when he's dark like this, but I love his normal coloration. But let's get him out and hopefully not irritate him too much. I don't think I'm going to tail him. I'm just going to try and get him straight into his enclosure. Don't want to mess with him too much. The woman just needs to be careful because he likes to fly out. But he's absolutely gorgeous. I just don't want to stress him out too much because I want him to have a fairly decent shed. And this might be an issue. Let's just wait for him to go back. Because he will definitely take a tag out of my fingers. There we go. Ah, a boer marker plan. Check how beautiful this Cape Cobra is. Eighth most venomous cobra, potent neurotoxic venom. Not a bite you would want to take. Even with anti-venom, you would probably sit on a ventilator for a couple of days. So, yeah, not a good bite to take at all. Awesome snake, but... Deadly. <laughs> Gonna move on to the next deadly snake real quick and I'll see you guys there. Okay, so I took the white lip pit viper out of its enclosure off camera because it's quite boring. It's a small little thing, but I'll show you quickly. I just deep cleaned its enclosure. It's quite, it's a baby and it is also going into shed. So it does look a bit worse for wear than what it usually does. They usually are vibrant green sort of color. But you can see this guy is a bit dull at the moment. This is a suspected male because these guys are sexually dimorphic, which just means the characteristics between the male and females are different in their gen well, species, not gender. Um, but yeah, 
he is quite calm, he's quite cool. Awesome little snake. People mostly get these guys for beginner animals, but their venom, sorry, he has a hair in his mouth. Their venom has been known to kill a few people and there is anti-venom available for this species, so their bite isn't good. Their venom is mainly hemotoxic venom, so it breaks down your red blood cells. Not a good bite, but they're beautiful little animals and most of the time they are quite calm. You can see, if you zoom in, on his lip there, there's a little white mark. Um, and that's obviously why they get the name white, the pit viper. Males and females are different. Females don't really have that white mark on their upper jaw. Obviously, there are some exceptions, but usually the males only have the white ones, and then the females are just sort of a green to more of a pale green. So, yeah, I'm going to get this one into its little enclosure. Obviously, they are boreal vipers. That's why... Oh, shit, dying. Um, he has that little climbing space. Very basic setup, but yeah, awesome species. Just gonna move on to one last species and then the video's gonna be done. I'll see you guys there. Yeah, so I am just busy taking out one of my pair of Chinese cobras. If I can get it out. Um, at the moment, I am. Ooh, hello, hello, hello. I am just busy changing their enclosures around. I want to get the. European nose horned adder and put him in one of those enclosures up top there. I think it will better suit him. But this is my Chinese cobra. I don't know if this is a male or female, but it obviously is a juvenile with the size of it. And it has a beautiful hood markings at the back of it. You can see they're almost like a spectacle cobra. Absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous animals. We see. Um, but yeah, they have a potent venom, cardiotoxins, hemo not hemotoxins, cytotoxins, and neurotoxins. So not a bite you would want to take, but they're absolutely gorgeous animals. But yeah, I'm just going to get in and into the other enclosure real quick. Um, let's do this without taking a boot, because a boot would be quite good. And let's just switch around this house in there as well. And then there we go. Bob's your uncle. Bob actually isn't my uncle. Bob touched me when I was younger though. <laughs> My girlfriend's disapproving look. But I'm gonna go get the European horn nose at it and gonna put it Dase. And that is the bane of South Africa's existence, the Hardy Dolls. Not the corrupt government. We call those Hardy Dolls absolutely irritating things. But yeah, just gonna get the horn nose at it and I'll be back with you guys soon. My European nose horned adder. I have a bunch of common names, but it's Viperia amadotes or amadites. Don't know the, the pronunciation, but he just tagged the gloves, so he's a bit upset. Um, they would be equated to similar venom to that of the Berg Adder, but these guys have been known, the, the native Berg Adder. Um, they have neurotoxic venoms as well as hemotoxic, I believe. Their neurotoxic venom mainly attacks the facial nerves. Um, you can hear him hissing there, a bit pissed off. Let's just have it like that, I don't want him to tag the glove again. But yeah, he has quite a potent venom. Um, wouldn't want to take a tag from these guys. There is anti-venom available in Europe, but yeah, obviously I'm not in Europe. They've only been known to cause deaths in the elderly and young people, but the locality of these snakes varies, like the venom toxicity varies from locality to locality. So. Snakes in captivity, um, it's difficult to track how potent their venom might actually be. But yeah, it's absolutely beautiful snake. I'm going to get him into his enclosure. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys did enjoy. And if you did, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. He bit me because he wants you guys to do that as well. But I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.